The second module of this lecture is a quick overview of some of the um, more interesting methods that are in the tool toolbox or some of the more useful ones. So um, th this serves as a little teaser. I say a few more things about some of those methods. There's, um, there's this big class of processes that we discussed in the last lecture, uh, which is event-related potentials and, s in a sense, time domain um, phenomena in EEG and the utilization of those things for BCI purposes. And there's two methods that kind of serve as a baseline. One is this windowed means approach that we discussed last time, which essentially amounts to, for a given epoch, um, extract a bunch of segments in that epoch, average the signal in these segments for each channel, and utilize the, these values as features um, that, that are fed to a classifier which tries to, to map that onto an output value, such as you are excited, you are not excited, you are surprised, you are not surprised, and things like that. And um, so that's the windowed means method. And this is basically one of the most frequently used methods for brain-computer interfacing uh, across the literature. And so it has to be in here as well. Um, obviously, there's, there's things that are tunable there. You can use different classifiers and use different um, parameters and things like that. Then there is another method that is uh, complementing that, which is, in a sense, higher end. It has, what's different is it has no hand tunable parameters. So whereas for this method, you have to decide, um, I want to use this feature and that feature in this time window, and here I make it a little bit larger or so, to capture what you think is the most interesting part of the data. This method learns automatically um, not only the spatial filters, like here, but for each one, it learns the associated time course. So that's basically the relevance over time. And it also learns the number of these um, processes uh, that, are, that are relevant. Um, it does this using a notion of sparsity uh, and regularization. So it's regularized. There's a tuning parameter that is automatically optimized using cross-validation. Uh, I say a few things about this method. So this is, you can say this is kind of the, the baseline is the higher end version. It obviously also runs quite a bit longer since it needs to optimize more stuff. For oscillatory processes, which is another category, and we'll specifically talk about that in the, in the next lecture, there's a bunch of methods as well. There is a baseline method called common spatial patterns, or common spatial pattern algorithm, which essentially completely, in a sense, dominates this whole field. It, it assumes that there is some stationary oscillation and that this is informative about um, some aspect of cognitive state that you're interested in in terms of how it's distributed in space or the amplitude and things like that. And so this method, CSP, has a lot of derivatives. There's more than 50 or so versions of this algorithm. And several of them are implemented. Some of them are state of the art and, of course, also the baseline method. So this is sort of the first thing, the first place to go when, when you want to analyze oscillatory processes and you know a few things about them, such as when they happen and so on. Um, so this also has a bunch of hand tuning parameters. There is a competitor, which is newer from 2010, um, which we are calling DAL OSC in, in the toolbox. DAL stands for Dual Augmented Lagrangian. That's a, um, a method that runs much slower than this one, or at least takes much more time to train. But uh, it has the benefit that you can basically prove that the solution is, is optimal under some reasonable assumptions that you, that you can decide to believe in, in a sense. Whereas this one is harder to reason about when it's optimal although there's also good optimality conditions for this one as well. So that's a higher end method. Um, what's neat about these kinds of methods is if the method doesn't find anything in your data, there's a very high chance that there's nothing in your data <laughs> as opposed to doing something where you don't know, okay, did the algorithm just fail or something like that. So that's sort of the, the baselines. There's some newer stuff uh, such as information flow analysis and so on, which is not yet in the public version, uh, but it'll be uh, in version one or two and onwards, which goes even further um, than that. And there is a few other new methods for which I have slides here. Um, one of those is uh, an advanced method for time domain analysis also. So also sort of in this ERP event related potentials playing field. Uh, this is also one of the methods that utilize all the information in in a segment of data that you decide uh, on. 
So, and we found, and others found as well, that many of these methods that in some optimal way utilize all the information under different views and assumptions and so on, frequently arrive at about the same performance level. So that's actually quite interesting. You, um, you can almost choose any of these um, globally optimal methods to, to deal with ERPs and, and be pretty much fine in most cases, unless you have re really few you know, small amounts of data or so to learn from. Um, for oscillatory processes, we also have another method um, which is new. It's going to come out in version 102, um, which learns simultaneously when things happen in time, where in frequency, and also where in space, and also sort of the number of processes that are relevant f given some data. Um, the number of processes that are informative about some cognitive state variable, if you will. That's called a regularized spatial spectral dynamics, or RSSD. So that's a new one that we actually came up with. Um, it's pretty slow to train, as it takes on the order of five to 10 hours or something like that if you do cross-validation and everything. Um, but it has this benefit that it learns everything. You have no parameter again. And does so at a very high res resolution in time and frequency and so on. Most alternatives uh, to this have to make some trade-offs. Um, and we will probably talk about a few of these trade-offs in some later, later lecture. It also has its problems. Um, it's, it's latent variable model, it might not always get, it cannot probably find the optimal solution, for example. There's a few exploratory methods. I'll just quickly mention those. For example, there's a method that finds um, multiple spectral processes, learns their spectral profiles, and localizes them in, in brain space, in a sense, under the assumption that the underlying oscillation, idle oscillation, for example, is stationary. So it doesn't change over time. Uh, at least not at, at fine time scales or so. So that's um, one, and there's, there's a few others. There's a Bayesian version of RSSD. And there's some methods that are even more exploratory um, that will be in the 102 version and onwards. For example, trying to find um, ERP processes that are jittered in time across multiple realizations, which is actually really hard to deal with. And we still don't have um, a something where, where we can prove the solution is optimal or so under some reasonable assumptions. And there's a bunch of methods that are based on independent component analysis, which is one of the strengths of this word center. So that is, uh, I think, enough for a little teaser of what's in this toolbox. There are various other things, such as artifact rejection, which is rather, I would say, kind of state of the art, and um, a few other newish methods or so. Um, so you really have to plow in and then just take a look at what's, what's in there. And so that, that's taking us to the end of this module.